It was a Thursday afternoon in October. My team was out in a Cambodian village when I ran across a man cooking fish for his family over the fire. My interpreter told him that I had an important story to share, so the man gathered his family and sat to listen. I went through the gospel presentation using Bible pictures and my personal testimony. When I asked him what would prevent him from believing Jesus to forgive his sins, he said, nothing. After he prayed a simple prayer with several of his family members, he looked directly at me, speaking through the interpreter, and said, I always knew there was more. What kept you so long from coming? From praying with a man cooking fish over an open fire in Cambodia, to sharing with people in your own community, God has been using international commission for decades to reach unbelievers and make disciples worldwide. Some 45 years ago, Ben Meath and Abel Gomez, one from the U.S. and the other from Mexico, entered into a partnership which changed two churches, one sending and the other receiving. This set in motion a strong, consistent model for missions, which has now been reproduced and flourished in over 164 countries. International Commission has now seen over 14 million indicated decisions for Christ. In 2016, the average number of decisions was 2,631 per project. IC is now seeing one person come to Christ for less than $3 in gifts. Each project takes on the flavor of the country or culture entered, but all maintain the threefold strategy modeled in the book of Acts, prayer preparation, intentional evangelism, and follow-up by the local church. So what does this look like, and how is it unique in today's world of mission activity? Each area of the world has a strategic leader who visits the country, looks for contacts and open doors, and invites Christian churches already there to participate in a partnering relationship. Once these churches have agreed, a preparation meeting is held with national pastors and church leaders. It is here that the prayer strategy is introduced and implemented. Each partnering church will challenge its members to identify and begin to pray specifically for 10 of their unsaved friends and loved ones. This Operation Andrew strategy engages the local church in an amazing and powerful way. Following the prayer preparation, the International Project team is finally ready to travel. Each team member will have prepared a personal testimony, which is translated into the local language. The team will visit homes, schools, churches, and marketplaces using these bilingual texts and translators. Other tools, such as tracts, Bible picture sets, and evangelicals are utilized as well to share the gospel story to those whose names have been uttered in prayer for many months. Another powerful aspect of a project is that with each gospel presentation, intentional evangelism is strongly mentored for local pastors and church leaders. By the time the project week is ended, these local believers will be encouraged to step up and share their own testimonies of faith, creating an ongoing outreach like the ripples of a wave. We are always excited to receive post-project reports of church planting, continuing baptism, and discipleship activities in these partnering churches. And for those who participated from the U.S., they carry home to their churches a fresh sense of power of the gospel to change lives and a renewed commitment to the Great Commission. In 1992, pastors in the Philippines who had previously been involved in IC projects in their country helped to birth what became known as National to National Projects, or end to end equipping and enabling the national church leaders and congregations to conduct a project on their own, established a pattern that has been followed ever since around the globe. With now over 250 of those projects annually, yielding hundreds of thousands of decisions, it is obvious God opened the doors and we continue to follow. Through both international projects and end-to-ends, the results can be nothing short of supernatural. Not only do we see thousands indicating decisions for faith in Jesus Christ, but most of them take place in the presence of a local pastor or church leader who can immediately encourage their new journey as disciples. Someone who speaks their language, knows their name, where they live, work, or attend school. We are always humbled by the stories that come to us from around the world. The Lord has a heart for the nations. 
and a great agenda laid out for us in the Great Commission. He has called each of us. The question is not, am I called to participate, but rather, how am I called to participate? Join us as together we fulfill this call, equipping and enabling to go and make disciples.